Hello and welcome to this video in which I discuss the top three reasons why you should use structural equation models in your research. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to latent variable models or other multivariate statistical analyses, often related to the M plus software. And so if this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like this video, then please hit the like button and check out the description for additional videos and workshops and other resources. In this video, I want to talk about the top three reasons why it is useful to employ structural equation modeling in research when you analyze uh, empirical data. And so the number one reason why I would say it is advantageous to use structural equation models if you can is because structural equation modeling provides a correction for measurement error when you use latent variables in your model. And so that is maybe the top one reason why people recommend and why people use structural equation models is because of the so say built-in correction for random errors of measurement. Why is this advantageous? It's advantageous because it allows you to obtain less biased or ideally unbiased estimates of regression and path coefficients when you correct for measurement error. In standard um, multiple regression analysis and standard path analysis with only manifest or observed variables, we don't have a correction for measurement error, at least not in the exogenous or uh, independent variables. And so as a result of measurement error in exogenous variables or predictor variables, we could say the regression coefficients may be biased or path coefficients may be biased, mediated effects may be biased. If you are analyzing a mediator effect in the standard OLS regression framework, moderator effects might be biased if you have a a moderated regression analysis, for example, and also if you have something like um, analysis of variance, um, things might be um, affected by measurement error. When you look at correlations, for example, Pearson product moment correlations, we know that there um, that as a result of measurement error, correlations between observed variables uh, typically are underestimates of the true correlations. This is something that we know from classical test theory. Maybe you've heard of the correction for attenuation formula that was proposed to correct um, correlation coefficients for this effect of unreliability or measurement error. And this is something that is so say, built into structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis, where you have this correction for attenuation, so to say, built into the model. And as a byproduct of structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis, you can also examine the reliability. So you get an estimate of how reliable or unreliable um, each observed variable is. You get an estimate of measurement error variance. You can compute a reliability coefficient or R squared and then see, say, how good your measures are. And so that is a key advantage of structural equation modeling is that it allows us to correct for measurement error, to obtain ideally path coefficients, regression coefficients, correlations that are less biased than if we were to use just observed variables in our analysis. And this is maybe really the absolute most important issue why this can help. Now, of course, this requires that you specify adequate measurement models, that you have measures that really for which it makes sense that they measure a common factor respectively. So to say, when you have multiple factors, then you should have indicators, multiple indicators for each factor that really are truly measuring this factor that are unidimensional, that are valid indicators of a common factor. And then you can um, employ structural equation modeling to separate measurement error variance from true score variance or reliable variance, we could say. And then the latent factors are related in structural paths where you can estimate regression coefficients, path coefficients, or latent correlations that are then not contaminated by measurement error. Now, what is the top two reason why I would recommend structural equation modeling? And so the, for me, the top two, or, or sorry, the second most important reason is that structural equation modeling is a very general and flexible framework that allows us to analyze a variety of highly complex 
um, models, complex data structures where we might have uh, many variables, where we want to look at complex relationships between variables, and we can specify all of that in a single model. We can have mediation effect, moderation effects, direct effects. We could have we can have just correlations. We can look at dyadic data. We can look at longitudinal data. We can look at multi-method data. So all kinds of data structures that offer additional complexity can be modeled and we have the flexibility to add all the effects that we need, so to say, to account for even complex covariance and mean structure. So we can analyze both covariances and means and variances. We can look at, uh, we can include um, specific effects. We can add cross loadings. We can have method factors. We could have specific factors that represent different raters. In longitudinal data, we can have trade factors, state residual factors, growth factors and so on. So you have a lot of flexibility in modeling complex data structures and complex models. And that is a big advantage. When you have just OLS, when you use just OLS regression, you're limited just to just, just a set of predictors and one outcome variable. When you have path analysis, you can do a little bit more. You can look at um, exogenous variables, mediator variables, and outcome variables, and it can be quite complex. However, then you don't have latent variables and you're also limited in other ways. So really this general structural equation modeling framework with latent variables allows us to do a lot, to analyze a lot of different situations adequately. And then for me, the third most important reason is that structural equation modeling allows us to do rigorous tests of our theories, rigorous tests of our models, because we can look at um, tests of model fit, for example, a chi-square test of model fit that allows us to test the causal hypotheses in our model and to reject a model when those assumptions are incorrect or when we have other misspecification in the model. And that's something that, for example, in regression, we also don't have. We get an R-squared, we get other measures of fit, so to say, that show us how good the predictors are or how much variance they explain. But we don't have an overall test of a theoretical model that tells us whether this model fits our data or not, because standard regression models, OLS regression models are always saturated. So they always fit perfectly. And so then we have to focus on things like R squared and um, regression coefficients. But in SEM, we get an overall model fit test, at least for models that are over identified, that are non-saturated, where we have testable restrictions, positive degrees of freedom, and then we can test those models and we can falsify them. Now, if your model fits, of course, that doesn't mean that your causal assumptions must be correct. But if your model doesn't fit, then you know that something must be wrong. And that is very valuable that we have this possibility with structural equation models to um, conduct rigorous tests of our theories. And so I find this to be a very important advantage. Now, if you would like to learn more about structural equation models, if you're new to this topic, please check out the description uh, to this video here where you can find uh, additional free resources, a free introductory course, for example, to a path analysis using the M plus software, also offer an introductory course to the uh, to a structural equation modeling with latent variables using M plus. And so you can find all that in the description. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then again, please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Also, if you like, please leave a comment in the comment section and tell me about what you think are the main advantages of SEM that I didn't mention here or other main advantages. Also, if you disagree with something that I said here, or if you uh, disagree that structure equation modeling can be useful, then please give your reasons and then we can have a discussion about why maybe you think that SEM isn't so useful. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next week.